This activity is in a unit on solutions. But as is the case in every day when my students walk into the class, they have something to do immediately. And if you're really lucky, you can have them do something that involves an experiment right from the get-go. So when my students would walk into the class, I would have them pick up a uh, sample of salt, and I would have them pick up an ice cube and pick up a length of string. And what I have set out over here are weighing pans that actually have samples of salt. I have some string. And of course, we have the ice cubes. And what I'm going to do is simulate how this would work in a class by having three volunteers come up here. And the challenge that I would write down on the board for my students would be to lift up the ice cube with a piece of string, not tying it around the cube, but being able to lift the ice cube off the lab bench top using just some table salt, some string, and of course the cube. So come on down, and I want you to, we'll put an ice cube at each place here, and you can use it in any direction. In fact, with my students, I give them no direction except not to tie it around. So we're going to see how well our volunteers manage today. Now, the technique they can use is either putting the string down first and sprinkling the salt, or putting the salt down and then the string. Uh, they can go lengthwise or widthwise, trying to get as much surface area or as little as they might want. And let's see if anybody's going to get lift off here. Yes, all yes. right. Judy is our winner. OK, now with my students, what I would do is give those some bonus points here. High five, Judy. Yes, all thank right. You. And, um, and then when we would go into a discussion of this. So thank each of you for participating. <laughs> thank you. And please have a seat. Now, once the students have done that simple activity, I say to them, all right, I live in a climate where we use salt on the streets to melt ice and snow. But my students also have had the experience, perhaps, of making homemade ice cream, in which case they also use salt. So rock salt on the streets to melt the ice and snow, rock salt in their ice cream freezer to freeze the ice cream. And I'll say, how come we use that rock salt in one case to melt something and in the other case to freeze something? And then someone will say, oh, well, the rock salt really makes the ice get colder. And it has to do with lowering freezing point. And that's really what we're getting to here, because we're in a unit on solutions. And freezing point depression is one of those factors that we want to investigate. So let's go over to the foam easel, to the easel with the foam board here. And what I would do with my students is I would write a line and we would represent the range over which water is a liquid, zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, zero being the freezing point and 100 being the boiling point. And then we would talk about how when you add something to water, when you add a solute, any solute for that matter, that you change that range, you extend that range. And so when you add a solute, such as salt, what it does is it lowers the freezing point. Notice that the arrow here is extended down. And so you can point out that actually anything can be put in there to lower the freezing point. And we'll come back to that in a little bit more detail in applications besides freezing ice cream. And it's also good to note that we raise the boiling point as well. Now, it doesn't do it equally. In other words, the raising of the boiling point is not nearly as significant as the lowering of the freezing point. But still, we do have that extension of the range over which water is a liquid. So let's see if we can explain on a more um, visual level what's going on there when you put a solute into water. So we're going to go to the board here. And what I have here are some representations of water molecules. Now these look a little bit strange. You know that water is a bent molecule. So we're just using an outline here. And this would be oxygen and the two hydrogens. But that's looking you know, right at it, looking it in the face. 
And this is going to represent that water molecule rotated 90 degrees on edge. Now, let this represent our liquid water, where we have all these molecules of water. And they can get fairly close to each other, because we know that liquids are somewhat close. But what happens when water freezes? It has a really unique property. Remember, water expands when it freezes. Why does it do that? Well, because when water goes from a liquid to a solid, it takes this particular crystalline shape. The water molecules line up in this formation. And we can continue that over here. Now, think about that. That takes up a lot more space than what I had up there originally, because water expands when it freezes. All right, so what happens when you drop in a solute? Well, when you drop in a solute, it kind of interferes. And so if we think of these two particles as being solute particles, we can see that if they get in there, they're going to get in the way. And so the water can't come together and freeze nearly as easily as it would have if it were just pure water molecules. In fact, the thing to stress with the students is that it depends on how many particles you have, how much that freezing point will be lowered. So if you have an ionic solid that is made up of a positive and negative ion, then what happens is that you've got twice as many particles to get in the way if you just add molecules. Now, Let's go back over to the table here and talk about this a little bit more. Remember we were talking about rock salt as being what we add to the roads to melt the ice or snow, and that we also put that into ice cream. So then I posed to my students, because after all, what did they just use with their ice cubes? I gave them just some regular Morton salt from the grocery store. And so I say to them, can we use Morton salt to melt ice and snow? Could we go sprinkle that out in the roads? And they're not so sure about that at first. And I go, well, isn't it sodium chloride? Isn't that what we just used here? And then they'll say, well, yeah, but that's kind of expensive. And then I'll say, well, let's look at it from another point of view. Could we take rock salt, grind that up, and sprinkle it on our french fries? It's sodium chloride. Would you want to do that? And of course, if you look at the sodium chloride rock salt, compared to the salt that comes out of the container, you know, one of them looks a little bit cleaner, doesn't it? And so the students will say, well, that one just isn't as pure. And so then we talk about how if someone, something is going to be used as a food product, how it has to have a lot more degree, higher degree of purity. But in essence, if it's sodium chloride, it does the trick. Now, besides melting snow on the ice, melting ice and snow on our streets in the winter, where else do we put a substance into water to make sure it doesn't freeze? And of course, all our students are very much tied into driving. And so we'll talk about their cars. OK, where's water in your car? Well, in the radiator. And so we don't want the radiator to freeze. And of course, if the water were to freeze in the radiator, remember, it expands when it freezes. And so we could do big damage to our radiator. So I'll say, well, so do we dump salt into our radiator? Won't it lower the freezing point? And of course it would. But of course, we know that salt is also corrosive to metals. And so that would not be a good idea. So what do we use? We use antifreeze. And here's an example of a commercial product. This is Prestone antifreeze. Now, antifreeze is actually ethylene glycol. It's a molecular substance. And then I'll say to the students, do we just dump pure antifreeze into the radiator? Do we replace the water with antifreeze? No, it's not that the antifreeze has a low freezing point. It's the combination. It's that dissolving of the solute of ethylene glycol with the water. In fact, a 50-50 mix would give us our most effective freezing point lowering. But one of the things that's interesting about antifreeze is that it can be used all year round. Now, why is that? Well, it says here, that it is an antifreeze, and it says it's a coolant. Now, remember when we were looking at the foam board on the easel, we noticed that it raises the boiling point of water to add a solute. And so when you use your antifreeze, if it raises the boiling point, that means in the summer, it's less likely that your water is going to boil off. 
Now, once we have gone through this in the class and talked about these applications, I give them a challenge. And if you really time it right and you live in a climate where you get snow, then you can take them outside and gather some snow. If you don't live in such a climate or if you haven't had any snow, well, you can give them some ice. But the challenge is this. I call the experiment, how low can you go? And what I do is I give them the apparatus, a styrofoam cup in a beaker for stability. And of course, they have to have rock salt. And then they have a thermometer. And the idea is that they go out and collect snow. They bring it back in. Or like I said, you could give them some crushed ice. I give each group a finite or the same amount of rock salt. And I say, you figure out how you want to layer it. Okay, Mix it any way you want. Don't use the thermometer as a stirring device. But you've got that thermometer to keep track. And then I say, take that rock salt and take the snow. And let's see how low of a temperature you can achieve. And it's been pretty amazing. Uh, I think the record in my class has been about minus 19 degrees Celsius. And that's pretty significant, I think. Now, not terribly quantitative. And there are quantitative experiments that can be done with freezing point depression. But this is a great way to introduce it. It's in a first year chemistry class. And since they don't have to do a great deal of math, if any at all, in this experiment, they really enjoy it. And like I said, try to time it. My solution unit falls in the winter. Try to time it, wait for that snowfall, and of course, when you're at school and you don't have a snow day, and take them outside, and they really get a big kick out of it. And they're not out that long to really get cold.